Uh, my name is Makoto Nagata of Kobe University, Japan, and I'm uh, talking about the physical attack protection of IC chips for the hardware security. Uh, there are many IC chips uh, currently uh, using uh, or used in the mission critical applications like automotive, drones, robotics, health and uh, medical healthcare, and many others. Uh, there are some functions of the security, like uh, cryptographic engines. Uh, those could be attacked or analyzed by the uh, people outside of the IC chip to extract the uh, secret information, like uh, secret keys like this. And also, there are other uh, considerations about the well, unwanted functionalities that could be situated in the chip uh, by some uh, malicious people, for instance, and uh, when the certain uh, triggering or certain conditions had happened, that those uh, unwanted function could start to operate. This is so-called hardware torsions as well. So uh, we need to have some protection techniques to uh, to prevent from any sort of malicious or analysis uh, attacks uh, from the outside of the tie. So there are some design gu guidelines or methodologies like shown in, in this chart. Uh, there are data interface that can uh, provide the plain text or cipher text after the cryptographic operation. Those would be uh, uh, covered by the interface module like here in, on, on the top. And also we have the uh, uh, clock, clocking, uh, core clock could be provided by PLL on the die that can eliminate any glitches or malicious uh, intentional changes in the clock's frequencies. And also, that we have the uh, power management control circuit here that will uh, regulate the PDD and VSS given to the cryptographic processor, and that can also partly uh, eliminate the issues of power noise analysis or power noise injections. But obviously, if we could uh, delaminate or open the package of the cryptographic device, uh, the external people can access to the location of the cryptographic processor uh, and produce some attacks like uh, laser injection in the category of the active attack and or the, uh, measuring the noise coming from the processor during the operation by using the antenna in the passive attacks. So that we need to do something. Uh, for the protection. Uh, this is a uh, one chart, uh, actual uh, snapshot of the analysis we are doing on the chip. So for instance here the chip, we don't have to uh, decapsulate or, or, or open the uh, packages. Uh, we may put the uh, micro EM probe on top of the die and then try to uh, extract electromagnetic waves radiated during the operation of the cryptographic module. As uh, like the photo on the right hand side. This is a magnetic probe that can be scanning over the printed circuit board and sometimes we can see the most strong uh, point of the uh, emanation uh, could found on the top on top of the type for instance. There are many uh, analysis, analysis models that can be used by the attacker or designer uh, about the simple power analysis, differential power analysis, correlation power analysis and local EM analysis and so forth. Uh, those could be uh, learned by, uh, through the uh, textbook or something that if you like. And uh, uh, this is a one, uh, the architecture uh, example of the advanced encryption standard. Uh, it's so-called AES, well known in many uh, products. And this is a particular design example using the uh, so-called byte-wise crypto computation, uh, where uh, each of the data paths uh, manipulates a single key byte, uh, 8 bit, among the uh, 16 bytes, uh, if that we use 128 uh, key lengths uh, designs. And those data paths will be running in parallel among the uh, different uh, uh, key bytes. Uh, and uh, also, we have uh, another module called uh, key uh, rounder or, or key uh, processing area. And those two will be combined together to create the final, uh, just, uh, the output, uh, the encrypted version of the input data uh, through the output port. And uh, there, it is known that there exists the uh, clear correlation uh, between the humming distance, uh, namely uh, the how many bits flipped in the last stage of the operation, uh, with uh, uh, the key, uh, the byte of the secret key. So this correlation can be uh, analyzed uh, or the extracted from the set of the uh, measured uh, power wave, power noise wave shapes, because the power current 
uh, normally had uh, a clear correlation with the humming distance in the internal uh, operation of the uh, database. So uh, after the collecting the set of the measurement waveforms, that we can apply the uh, statistical analysis uh, to extract or to deduce or derive uh, some of the key bytes uh, just to, uh, using the noise wave shapes. As I mentioned, this is a problem of the power noise uh, in that case, in, in that sense that we can use the chip package system board model for the potential uh, analysis uh, in the simulation case, or we can use this model for the on die diagnosis if we have the on chip monitoring in the, in the die, for instance. The crypto proce cryptographic processor is situated in the die and it's supplied by the power management control. And uh, the PMC is also supplied by the extern external uh, uh, voltage source uh, through the PCB printed circuit board and also package. So uh, the, we can uh, analyze where is the most uh, uh, important point to see the correlation of the power noise with the secret key bytes in the cryptographic processor, for instance. And uh, uh, here is a chip uh, of the example uh, waveforms. Uh, where uh, the on-chip monitor is uh, measuring the, some uh, uh, noise wave shapes on the uh, BSS node of the AES uh, engine and also another point uh, on the silicon substrate. And uh, here are some wave shapes and uh, the one on the bottom showed you the uh, BSS waveforms during the operation of the AES circuit uh, on, the, on the BSS and uh, uh, we have the obviously we have the 12 peaks uh, because there are uh, the uh, operation of the AS uh, data pass uh, needs 12 clock cycles and the last cycle this is a point of the uh, source of the uh, leakage information leakage and uh, also that we if we see the similar wave shapes on top where the OCM monitors on some potent, some uh, place on the silicon substrate. And uh, this means that we can also extract some information even on any place on the silicon substrate, uh, especially in the case of uh, uh, flipped chip packaging, like a ball grid array packaging style. The, the, the backside surface of the silicon sub, sub silicon is open for the uh, people to access easily. So here is an example of the measurement results on the side channel leakage. And uh, the graph on the left gives you uh, the idea where the horizontal axis gives you the number of traces. That means the, uh, the number of the different plain text given to the AES processor in this case. And the vertical axis gives you the number of analyzed key bytes. So kind of the after the uh, deduction or derivation uh, using the uh, statistical analysis. So for the larger number of the uh, traces, the larger number of the analyzed key bytes could happen. So if we uh, analyze all the 16 bytes, that means 128 uh, bit lengths, uh, key could be derived. In the case of the 130 nanometer CMOS in this case, uh, we had a different designs uh, of SBOX 1, 2, 3, and 4. And uh, somehow we see some difference among them, but uh, in this case, uh, the after uh, like uh, four, 5,000 number of traces, we can accept all the key bytes. If we use the same design, uh, which is implemented in the 65 nanometer uh, CMOS, uh, the, the situation will be slightly changed, but still, I can say that if we ex uh, prepare more than uh, 100,000 uh, traces that we can accept all the key bytes, even for the best design in this box in this case. The chart on the right gives you the idea uh, where uh, the measured voltage drop in the last byte, uh, last uh, cycle of the, of the AES operation, uh, the size is well correlated with the uh, uh, humming distance. So the larger humming distance, the larger voltage drop we see. So the Voltage variation, the area of voltage variation is a kind of the uh, metric that can be used for uh, assess the design uh, uh, with uh, resiliency against uh, uh, correlate uh, power analysis attacks. So if we can reduce that range, that design can be uh, better, I can say. One of the important points is it is difficult to achieve the complete elimination of such uh, correlation. Uh, but uh, we can do something to uh, reduce the or the mitigate the uh, level of correlation. This can be the design challenge. And uh, another point of view, uh, the, we may design a special circuit, so-called attack sensor. And in the case of the micro EM probe situated on the top of the crypto core, 
It used to be uh, people think that uh, the EM probe or EM attack or the measurements, the noise uh, using the antenna can be the invasive style. So we don't, we we didn't need to uh, open the uh, package, and this this is this can be uh, classified as invasive attack. But it's in reality, there are change in the EM field actually because that we have some coupling between the EM probe and also the. Uh, chance or the uh, wirings on the die. So we use that idea for the uh, sensor. Here are the example. If have, we have the dual sensor coils, one coil if, and the other coil, those are connected to the uh, on-chip oscillator uh, respectively. And once that the coil is, uh, once that the coil is coupled to the EM probe, that the, the frequency of the oscillation will be changed. So this is a, a principle of the, the sensing that attacks uh, coming uh, nearby the die. So here is the uh, demonstration results. And when we have no antenna on top of the cryptographic engine, the, the two dual coils, three turn and four turn coils, uh, the oscillators give the same oscillation frequency after the calibration. But once that probe is coming to the die, that's the one of the, uh, the uh, oscillator starts to change its frequency. So now that the chip or the circuit can detect the change and uh, thinks that, that now the chip is under the attack or potential uh, intentional uh, access is happening. So now I come to the conclusion. So uh, there we need uh, really need of on-chip protection circuits against a variety of physical attacks uh, that can provide a higher level of IC chip hardware security. And not only just uh, passive attacks like Elema in the last uh, example, we also need to consider the active attacks like a laser fault injection, and also many others uh, become threats nowadays. And a chip package system board simulation technique can help the designers uh, for doing the better uh, selection of the uh, circuit level architectures for the resiliency, and also the design of the, of the attack sensors as well. And uh, there are also uh, uh, another research space for the uh, on-chip and in-system protection against hardware torsions. Thank you very much.